This is the book of Ephesians 4 and 32, and it reads, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahweh, for Mashiach's sake, hath forgiven you. This is the book of 1 Maccabees 2 and 57. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. And with that, given all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, in whom the world is ignorantly called Jehovah or Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, in whom the world has ignorantly called Jesus Christ, in whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consist of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, giving double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well, and continue to do so, that taught me and brothers like me, and you believe is this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power and of his anointed. Now these are the two most important things you will ever know. The name of the Heavenly Father and the name of His only begotten Son, their true and proper names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, our language, the Lashawan Kodash, which means holy tongue. Lashawan meaning tongue and Kodash meaning holy. Now these be the names that are written. Now the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahawah. Yah meaning He, Hawa meaning exists or is or is to be. He is. He exists. He, the existing one, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And the name of his only begotten son, who has a name that is above every name, given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite men first, and also to the believers consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets and those that have faith. The name that they will be calling upon, the true and proper name, is Yahawashai. Yah, meaning he, Yahawashai meaning deliverer and savior. And that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form yet as an angelic force. For he has already saved us from ourselves, from sin and from death by shedding his precious blood over 2,000 years ago to make it possible for us to enter into a new agreement. And this agreement is made with the same people, the Israelites, but yet based on better promises, beginning with that hopeful elect, the house of David, to enter into eternal life. And this is life eternal, to know the one true power and the one whom he have sent. For where there is no sin, for where there is no sin, there is no death. And we shall never die, hence living forever. Hence, eternal life. And we have that through our mediator, the doorway back to the Father, our Savior, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, whose name is in the Father, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And now that you know the name of the Father and Son, you must call upon those names when you pray. Call upon those names when you bless a brother or a sister in the faith or your household or your children. Call upon these names when you are in distress. Call upon these names. And you will see the power thereof. So Lord's willing, this is an edifying lesson. And Lord's willing, I call this lesson merciful kindness. All right? Merciful kindness. And Lord's willing, it's not too long. You know, I'm uh, pretty much uh, on time. All right? I'm kind of like pressed for time. But hey, let's get it. Let's get into it. Let's get into uh, David a little bit, our Lord, having uh, 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 mercy and kindness. And even how David showed that kindness, he possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. And it's the spirit and the Lord, Yahweh Shai, came to do the same, just that. That's why uh, David, okay, was a man after the Lord's own heart. But yet, Yahweh Shai, through this man's line, was the actual son of the heavenly father and was the expressed image of his person <clears throat> so there you go let's get it and we being his sons being his uh students his disciples where we are we are to walk in the same uh, path okay colossians 2 and 13 and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. 
See, because David uh, committed three sins that he should have been put to death for according to our law. Okay, to the according to the letter of the law. But through the merciful kindness of Yahweh Bashim Shai, he was spared. Though he was, uh, you know, chastised and judged, he was spared. And that's why we want the sure mercies of David. Because we've gone off, we've we went a little far astray. But us showing merciful, loving kindness to our brethren, those that uh, are in the image or being conformed to the image of Yahweh Shai, us showing them that mercy that was shown us, hey, we, we begin to build and we will inherit an everlasting kingdom as David possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. All right, and in all the wars, us knowing that our power is merciful, we must be merciful, not unto our enemies in a sense, knowing that the Lord is going to uh, avenge us and destroy them, but even our enemies amongst our own nation, we must know that the Lord is going to take the wheel as he always does, and he will do much more than we can ever do. If those among our nation are deadly enemies and they're evil in their minds, the Lord is going to judge them for that evil. As you see in these other camps, they hate us without a cause, but hey, praise ye Yahweh Bashim Shai. We will still show ourselves merciful. We will give this word. We will teach our people, though they uh, get it or don't get it. We're still out there. We're still showing mercy. All right. In a sense, we the, 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 the weightier matters of the law, we do not omit. There's judgment, faith and mercy. OK, now this is second Maccabees 1 and 24. Us going out into the battle. We trust in our Lord and in his power and in his might. For our God is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed in the earth. Second Maccabees 1 and 24. And the prayer was after this manner. O Lord, Lord, power creator of all things who art fearful and strong and righteous and merciful and the only and gracious king see that merciful and the only and gracious king you see that we're becoming as uh, the father in, in the heavens knowing that he fights our battles okay man second Maccabees be 7 to 37 but i as my brethren Offer up my body and life for the law, laws of our fathers, beseeching Yahweh that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that thou, by torments and plagues, mayest confess that he alone is God. That's it. See that? Us offering our body, that's being merciful. Because they'll do that. Nah, I ain't about to do nothing for nobody. But hey, we're giving up our lives for the Lord as he did for us. No greater love than a man had but this, that he lay down his life for his friends, for his family, for his brothers. Okay? This is First John uh, 2 and 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. <whistles> See that? Okay. And us being uh, 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 merciful. And having that kindness and forgiving one another, the Lord makes us powerful, powerful to fight our battles, to fight wars, to fight our enemies. All right, because even us being kind unto our enemies, in a sense, is if we heap a coal of fire on their heads. And they're like, damn, what the, damn, we tripping, you know, not even knowing that hey, at, the, at the, the very same time, if always please the Heavenly Father, he'll make even our enemies to be at peace, whether it be of our nation or our actual enemies. Because the way we're moving, as David moved wisely and the Lord was with him in all his ways. Okay, this is 2 Maccabees uh, 10 and 26. And fell down at the foot of the altar and besought him to be merciful to them and to be an enemy to their enemies and an adversary to their adversaries as the law declareth. See, we fall down before the altar. We fall down before Yahweh Bashmashai. We fall down. And we understand the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai gave because of him, we have access back to the Father. And he hears us again. Okay? Because if we didn't have a merciful spirit, we'd be like, uh, well, I know the truth and hell with everybody else. I know the truth only. And 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 uh, I'm so cool. I only know the truth. The hell with everybody else. I ain't got to go out there and preach. I ain't got to go out there and do this, that, and the third. But no, you being having that merciful heart like David, 
He fought the wars for Israel. Even though Saul was hunting him, he still fought the wars for his people. And even in the wars between the house of Saul and David, David didn't want the blood to be shed of his own brethren. But he was like, hey, you chased me without a cause. Like, what, what's going on? You know, he wanted to unify Israel. Just as us, we want Israel to be unified, but you got a lot of proud dudes and demons and assholes that aren't, aren't merciful. Okay? But hey, over here at Great Millstone, you're going to find mercy. Hey, our apostles broke down so many jewels and and secrets and mysteries that were revealed unto them, they could have kept secret to themselves. But no, they expressed it and taught it and gave it unto us. And we give it unto you just as we were freely given it. As Yahweh Shai stated, we freely give. We don't hold anything back. Merciful kindness that we learn from our power. Yahweh Shabbat Shai. That's how you know who's serving the Lord and who's not. Okay? This is... Uh, 2 Maccabees 11 and 9, and it reads, Then they praised the merciful power all together and took heart, mind, insomuch that they were ready not only to fight with men, woo, because we're ready for the fight. Okay? <laughs> hey, hey, look at what it says right there with my man Zuko. All I wanted was for you to love me, to accept me. You know, and that's what we ask in a, in a sense from our nation. But hey, we rather have that from the Lord. If the Lord is pleased with us and, and he loves us, then we're, we're good. Though we be hated. Hey, Paul said it. Let me get that. The more I love you, the less I be loved. Let me get that. The more I love you. Okay. The man, because the men of the Lord went through it, you know, just hated and like, God damn, you know. Oh, psh, spirit, man. Let me get that in the, in the uh, NLT as well. Now, let's read this in 2 Maccabees 11 and 9. Then they praised the merciful power altogether and took heart in so much that they were ready not only to fight with men, but most cruel beasts and to pierce through walls of iron. Because us doing that which is well pleasing unto the Lord, knowing that our enemies are going to be at peace with us, knowing that everything is going to be bowed down, that the Lord is going to handle all. That the Lord has established us a kingdom as he did for David. In his time, when you read uh, First and Second Samuel, how the Lord kept him in all his ways and how David moved wisely, then we already know. So we have a, a spirit of, 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 of like, the, like a juggernaut. You can't stop us. We're just boom, 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 going through walls after wall. Nothing can stop us once we have the love of Yahweh Bashemashai. And those that are merciful uh, uh, shall see Yahweh Bashemashai. Lord, is when I get that. Uh, let me actually get that. Okay. Woo! And we marching forward, just like the, uh, to the attack the walls of Jericho. Second Maccabees 11 and 10. Thus they marched forward in their armor. We had the full armor of the Heavenly Father on. Having an helper from heaven. For the Lord Yahweh, Bashimah Shah, was merciful unto them. Whew. See that? The Lord's going to be merciful unto us. All right. Shall see. Oh, the peacekeeper. See, David was a peacekeeper. I'm going to get that, that history with him and uh, Abner. Peace uh, makers. Okay. The Lord is pleased with that. Yeah, we can wage war when it's the Lord's time. We'll wage war against our enemies. We'll push them down by the name of our power and his anointed. By the name of Yahweh, Yahweh, will we push down our enemies and tread them under that rise up against us when the time is right. But for now, we are not omitting the weightier matters of the law. We're telling you the judgment that's about to come upon the wicked and the ungodly and two thirds of our people. We're telling you of the faith to have faith in what Yahweh Shai did for you to be the doorway back to the father, because through him we live. We are quickened though. We were once dead in trespasses and sins. And through him, we have access back to Godhood. Praise him. He is worthy to be praised because he's shown us back the way to the father and he has showed us the father through himself he is the expressed image of the invisible power that have chosen us to be his own special people and we have also shown you the mercy of Yahweh because it was I mean according to what is right the Lord deserves to destroy us all he should destroy us all in a sense, right? He could do that if he wanted to, but he is a merciful power. He is merciful. And he's showing his mercy 
beginning with that house of David, beginning with the promises he made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is a merciful power knowing whom he have chosen and whom he have sent. And we believe in whom he have sent his son. Now let me get this here. Ooh, I'll read verse six on down Matthew five and six. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, woo, for they shall obtain mercy. Woo, there it is. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Yahweh. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of Yahweh. Ooh, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Ooh, there it is. Call halal yum la, yaha Let me play this clip. It was when they play, so like, don't know what's going on. All right, here we go. Mine does. There's no honor for me without the Avatar. You're just a banished prince. No home, no allies. Your own father doesn't even want you. You never think these things through. This is exactly what happened when you captured the Avatar at the North Pole. You had him, and then you had nowhere to go. I would have figured something out. No! If his friends hadn't found you, you would have frozen to death. You see that, man? Because, hey, well, hey, that was beautiful. He's like, you're a banished prince. You have no home, no allies, no nothing. We're, we're through as a nation. We're seeing. We have nowhere to go. We have no, <laughs> no nothing, man. We're being persecuted on all sides. And I think about David on the run. You know, he had no, no home, no, you know. It, was, it would seem he had a home. He had places to go. He had no allies for a time when uh, uh, Jonathan told him, hey, if I shoot the arrow beyond you, hey, go, leave, get out of here. If it goes uh, before you, then all right, everything is good. You can come back. But David had to flee. Then he fled to the, the cave of Adullam, and that's when all his brethren and his men uh, joined unto him. But you got to you gotta think what was going through David's mind. But then again, you know, he, he knew he had the Lord, okay? Same with Yahweh Ultimately, Yahweh when he had to uh, bear the burden alone, all the disciples fled from him. Not that they were like cowards or anything, but it was the spirit and it was prophecy that the Lord had to endure that alone. Okay? He knew what he had to do. And he, even on the cross, my power, my power, why has thou forsaken me? Not that the Lord forsook him. It was that the, the he had all the iniquity of Israel on him at one time. And the Lord, his eyes are too pure to behold iniquity. But the Lord was with him. You see, he's like, and in, in the clip, you never think these things through. See, when we came into this thing, we, you know, so some, some certain things get you maybe the garment, the glitz and the glamour. Really, that was not that was that what got us. It was the word. And then, you know, all the, the promises and the great things, the kingship, priesthood, all that power. OK, you know, that that captivates you uh, everlasting life, you know, never dying, having power that captivates you. But ultimately, we thought it through at first, you know, in this world, you never think things through. But coming into this truth, you had to think things through, like, hold on, what is the bigger picture? The hell is going on with me right now and the chastisements and me getting my ass kicked. But what is the bigger picture? The Lord showed his mercy upon me. Though it comes with chastisement, we must show mercy unto our brethren and those that are of the household of faith. And even to the Gentiles, our people that are without, that are still lost in the world. And even unto the heathen, because they're going to see there's a difference about you. And if you move a certain way, they'll move a certain way. And if you always please the Lord, he'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Okay. Now let's read this in 2 Corinthians 12. And uh, 15 and it reads, and I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. In LT, I will gladly spend myself and all I have for you, 
even though it seems that the more I love you, the less you love me. <laughs> Man, yeah, you see, you, you feel that way. The woman you had, the people around you, friends, your family, like what? The more I love you by telling you this truth, the, the ways of the Lord and, and what's coming and, and what was destined for us and, and all of that. But you but you hate me the more like, dang, you know, come on now. Now, this is um verse 16. But be it so I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. See, through the word, certain men were caught, not sneakily or wickedly, but by what was presented, you know, you seen the pureness of our heart, our hungering and thirsting for righteousness, us showing you mercy, we obtain mercy, uh, us being of a pure heart, we shall see the heavenly father and us be peacemakers. We are the children of the Lord. And then even in the midst of it, because, you know, most people run away. Oh, man, y'all catching hell. Lord ain't dealing with y'all. But yet it, telling you, it tells you right there in Matthew 5 and 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for what? Righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. See that? You see that? Okay. Let's get down. Uh, um. Okay, when he uh, established the kingdom under the David. Okay, bear with me, brothers. Bear with me, brothers. Let me find it. All right. Yeah, but it's in our second Samuel. Bear with me, brothers. Okay. Bear with me, brothers. Okay, here we go. I'll start. Hmm, I'm trying to see. Yep, yep, right there. Yep, I'll start at verse 17. This is a, David being a peacemaker right here because it was one long war between the house of Saul and David, right? Now, this is 2 Samuel 3 and 17. And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel saying, you sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then do it. For the Lord, Yahweh, have spoken of David saying, by the hand of my servant, David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies. You got to remember Saul is dead, but Abner is still a mighty man, but they have to unite the nation. And we, uh, we see what it says here in Matthew 5 through our Lord Yahweh Shai, red letter, right? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be the children of Yahweh. Though our people are the children of the Lord because they're Israel, a lot of them are not at this time because they're not peacemakers. They want to do their own goddamn thing. Fuck you. It's about me. No, we're like, no. What's mine is yours. What's yours is mine. And we're, we're together on this. United. That's why we always talk about the elect. We always talk about the house of David. That is a house that is united. Not divided. United. That's why there's a one third and two thirds. Two thirds is just uh, the reservoir dogs. They want to be destroyed, whatever. But the one third are collectively one. Becoming what? The church of the Lord. All right. Peace upon the Israel of God. Peace and mercy upon the Israel of God, as Paul stated. The church, because we have one head, one Lord, one baptism. 
And we know who our Lord is. We ain't calling him by different than old wood. Over here is a high, over there is Christ blessed. No, it's Yahweh Shai, one. All that are of the elect, no, one. Yahweh Wa, Yahweh Shai. That's it. All right. We speak about the elect, King David. You'll know who are the merciful ones, who are of the house of David, who's moving as David did. Yeah, we're warned. Yeah, there's, there's uh, skirmishes back and forth with these other camps. It happened in the past. It happened right here in the history. But Abner being a man of honor and David being a man that was merciful, wanted to establish peace in Israel. After Saul, who, you know, was bugging out, the Lord sent an evil spirit on him. He took him out. And once that was gone, the evil was gone out of Israel. They're like, all right, let's establish peace now. Okay. Let me read verse 17 again. This is beautiful. Second Samuel 3 and 17. And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, Ye sought for David in times past to be king over you. NLT. Meanwhile, Abner had consulted with the elders of Israel for some time now. He told them, You have wanted to make David your king. Verse 18. Now then do it. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashim El Shai, hath spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies. Verse 18, NLT. Now is the time. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashim El Shai, has said, I have chosen David to save my people Israel from the hands of the Philistines and from all their, en from all their other enemies. Because we were enemies amongst ourselves, house of Saul, house of David, but there was a pact and peace being made among the tribes to be a united kingdom. <laughs> the UK, <laughs> the original UK, all right? Which uh, Jake ruled the UK uh, anyway, you know, uh, centuries later. Verse 19, and Abner also spake in the ears of Benjamin. Now, now hey, this is, this is the coldest part because Benjamin was like, damn, you know, we was ruling, we had the kingship, you know, with Saul, you okay. But they really had to, they really heard Abner out. He was an honorable man. He was the captain. Okay. He he took uh, the place after Saul. He he was um, watching over uh, Saul's last living son, which I believe was Ishbosheth, right? Who was lame on his feet. He couldn't move, right? So it was like Benjamin was like, damn, okay. Um, we see David gaining power. He's of the tribe of Judah. Judah's all the all the tribe of Judah's with him. Okay. And all, all we have all the rest of the nation of Israel with us. But we see that Abner is about to transfer to all the tribes, the whole nation, over to David. And they already agreed to have David be the king. So Benjamin was like, well, we must make it a whole nation then. You know, if all the other tribes agreed and Judah is already with David. You know, Abner was that man, that middleman between them to make everything right through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim El Shai. That is all that was needed. David showed him mercy. He showed David mercy. He's like, hey, hey, we're brothers. Hey, we're Israelites. Yeah, we fought good wars. Uh, uh, many lives were lost. OK, but now we need to establish a kingdom. And Abner was, was for it. And David was for it. All right. But there's other men in the mix that was not for it. And you see it. When you read Samuel, okay, men trying moving in their own ugly spirit and not moving in the spirit of the Lord, okay? But uh, that's another lesson for another time. We're going to get, you know, the merciful kindness of our, of our God and the men that he chose to establish that kindness to establish a kingdom, okay? It's 2 Samuel 3 and 19. And Abner also spake in the ears of Benjamin. And Abner went also to speak in the ears of David in Hebron. All that seemed good to Israel and that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. Verse 19, NLT. Abner also spoke with the men of Benjamin. Then he went to Hebron to tell David that all the people of Israel and Benjamin had agreed to support him. Woo! There it is. Verse 20. So Abner came to David to Hebron. All right. And 20 men with him. And David made Abner and the men that were with him a feast. You see that? It was a good times, man. Hey, praise the Lord. Because, hey, if David was a wicked man and it just was, was uh, emotional and hateful, 
and not merciful, you've been like, all right, well, I got Abner, the captain, okay, over all Israel here. I got him and his men. I can do a red wedding on him or whatever. <laughs> like, nah. He's like, no, this is an honorable man. Yes, Barakatai Yahweh Bashim Shah, there is peace in Israel. Finally, after all the wars, after, you know, after so many, after all the loss. Because even when uh, Saul died, David wasn't happy about that. Or Jonathan being dead and his other sons. He wasn't happy about that. He's like, peace, that's all he wanted. That's what the Lord wanted ultimately for his nation was peace. Right? And, and, and the Lord gave Israel a king in their carnality, Saul. But then Saul was dead. But finally, Israel wanted that king that Yahweh chose by Shem Yahushai. So the Lord, hey, you got you to gotta understand, okay, it's a pleasing thing on all sides. Abner's happy. David's happy. The Lord is like, all right, yeah, that's my man. That's the man after my own heart right there. Okay. It is a united nation. Under God, under one, <laughs> under Yahweh Bashim Mount Shai. And it's going to be that once again. All right, but bear with me, brothers, bear with me. All right, I'll get my back. Let's, let's read uh, into this history a little bit further. It says, uh, verse 20, 2 Samuel 3 and 20, when Abner and 20 of his men came to Hebron, David entertained them with a great feast. <laughs> verse 21, Abner said unto David, I will arise and go and will gather all Israel unto my Lord, the king, that they may make a league with thee and that thou mayest reign over all that thine heart desireth. And David sent Abner away. and He went in peace. Well, that's the spirit. The United Kingdom. But then you had a wicked person being a demon and being fucking emotional and almost destroyed everything. That was uh, made right here in this moment. That's why the Lord demanded this. This is, this is Yahweh Shai, red letter, demanded this. He said, all right, okay. If you, if you want to be blessed, if you want to be that, that person in the eyes of the Lord and in the eyes of the people, this is what Yahweh Shai broke it down to. All right, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are they that are merciful. Mercy shall be obtained. Blessed are they that are pure, pure in heart. You shall see the Lord. Blessed are they that are peacemakers, for they are the children of the Lord. <clears throat> okay, and then blessed also when you're persecuted. Why? For who? For Yahweh, the power, and Yahweh Shai, the son's sake. The father and the son's sake. Not just being persecuted because you're an asshole or a thief or a robber. No, it's because you trust in the Lord. David was persecuted for that. But in the end, what happened? A united kingdom. All right, this is 2 Samuel 3 and 21. Then Abner said to David, let me go. Call an assembly of all Israel to support my Lord, the king. They will make a covenant with you to make you their king. And you will rule over everything your heart desires. So David sent Abner safely on his way. Joab murders Abner. See that? And David wasn't pleased with this, but um, we're going to read down into it. How uh, uh, what, what mercy can get you a, a kingdom and what uh, uh, carnality gets you. Guess what is going to get Joab? Nothing. But but we're we going to read on down into it, though. And uh, let's, let's go into it. It's verse 22. And behold, the servant of David and Joab came from pursuing a troop and brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away and he was gone in peace. All right, because Joab was, you know, plundering the land, expanding David's territories, you know, in a sense. Which Joab was a, a great commander <clears throat> and warrior, but he wasn't he wasn't spiritual. He was more carnal than spiritual, which us brothers in this truth have to be more spiritual than carnal. The Lord is going to amp up our power and the time is right. We all warriors, you know, brothers love fights. We like you know, my, my man Mayweather, you know. You like Bruce Lee, you like the quotes, you like to get down, you like to fight, you know, brothers uh, have skills, they grapple, sword fight, whatever, you know, you got your different skills to make you ma a man, to feel like you're manly, you know, to, to get your testosterone pumping, you know, you know, that's us as a people, we just, you know, come on now, but you got to be spiritual, because this, this devil, Esau, Edom, he's carnal, so us moving spiritually, he's like, Bugging the fuck out. Like, how am I supposed to attack these people and attack them if they're just 
spiritual. The, the, this devil can't attack a spiritual temple or or a spiritual battalion. He can't do it. That's why we lift up our shield of faith against this demon and all his fiery darts that he's going to cast at us. But how much more just moving in the spirit from day to day, being merciful, showing that merciful kindness, not just being a pushover or whatever to our enemies, but showing yourself noble as David did. David was uh, 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 expanding land, uh, uh, getting wives, wives of our, our women, of the tribes and wives of the heathen to make packs with different kingdoms. That's why when Solomon came to the throne, whoo, a glorious kingdom, man, peace. All right. But it wasn't just, you know, battle after battle wars, but it was peacemaking wars, subjugation, things of that nature. But David did have a lot of blood on his hands, but he fought the wars of the Lord. He didn't just go out there and raid when he wanted to raid. He did it after counseling with the Lord. That's what we do. We don't go out there and just do what we do. We go out there in the spirit and power of the Lord, doing everything decently and in order. It says, but just after David had sent Abner away in safety, Joab and some of David's troops returned from a raid, bringing much plunder with them. Verse 23, when Joab and all the hosts that was with him were come, they told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, and he has sent him away, and he is gone in peace. NLT, when Joab arrived, he was told that Abner had just been there visiting the king and had been sent away in safety. Verse 24, then Joab came to the king and said, what hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is it that thou hast sent him away? And he is quite gone. Joab rushed to the king and demanded, what have you done? What do you mean by letting Abner get away? Because you got to remember Abner. Uh, had killed Joab's brother Asahel, but only after he told Asahel to stop pursuing him. He said, how am I supposed to look your brother Joab in the face if I kill you? And that's exactly what happened. It was a battle raging, and, and Asahel didn't stop pursuing uh, uh, Abner, which was a mighty warrior on the battlefield. Come on now. And he told him to stop, and he did it, and, and Asahel died right then, okay, being uh, thrust through. But now, you know, Abner was all right. That was a fight. You know, we had our battles, but now we have to unite Israel. And, and David was with that, too. Like, yeah, we had battles. Yeah, we spilled blood. I didn't want it to go that way. But now we need, we need to make peace. We have to show merciful kindness one to another, to our nation. And we received this from our power. But we have to come together. We have to do things right in order for the Lord to show us merciful kindness as a nation. And they understood that these two men. Right. Saul was bugging out, having his, you know, his rant. And then once Saul was laid down, they're like, all right, okay, now things can, you know, get better. And then Joab had that same mind, like, no, no, I'm still mad about, Ugh. you can't be like that. Come on, man, merciful kindness. Vengeance belongs unto the Lord. Do not forget that. Do not forget that. Vengeance belongeth unto our Lord, Yahweh Shai. And when the time is right, the Lord is going to give us the power to defeat our enemies, to take them down. But for now, forgive one another, especially those that are of the household of faith. Also as Yahweh, because the Lord is hot, the Heavenly Father is hot. But because of what Yahweh Shai did, the Lord has forgiven you, your trespasses because of what Yahweh Shai did. So you must forgive as well. OK, especially if one is seeking out forgiveness and a pact and a peace uh, 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 treaty, so to speak, in the spirit. Go with it. Don't be carnal. All right, let's read on. OK, but let me get uh, trying to see here. Trying to see. Hmm. Oh, yeah, let me get that. Uh, Dave was chosen. There's a reason David was chosen, man, and he moved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. All right. Mm. Boom, bam. Let's get it. Ecclesiastes Cuss 47 and uh, 1. And after him rose up Nathan to prophesy in the time of David. And it's funny because even when David went off and he did what he did and Nathan uh, confronted him, David being the king, he could have been proud and carnal. Man, the hell with you! Uh, uh, off with your head, put him to death or whatever. 
But no, he he humbled himself. I was like, damn, I messed up. And hence we got Psalm 51 because of it. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me, okay? David was merciful and understood and humbled himself. And the Lord showed him mercy, even in an act where he should have been put to death. How about that? You see that? They that, blessed are they that uh, uh, are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Come on, man. Verse two, as is the fat taken away from the peace offering, so was David chosen out of the children of Israel. See that? Come on now. But let's read on into this story. This is why you don't want to be carnal. All I wanted was for you to love me, to accept me. And that's what Saul uh, did wickedly. He listened to the people. He wanted to do his uh, his own thing instead of doing what the Lord commanded him to do. See, David is doing what the Lord wants, not what he wants, what the Lord wants. The Lord wanted peace between Israel. And that's why he was making this pact with Abner. But Joab was looking at like, come on, Joab, like we're, we're Israel. Yeah, we've been fighting. Yeah, we had, you know, some good battles, whatever. But hey, man, now it's time for peace. But no, he's going to move carnally and be a demon. And we're going to read it here. And this is what you're not supposed to do. Okay? Because this is not what the Lord wanted. But you see what uh, what the end of Joab was. You know, if you read and you know the history, you know. You know. Now let's read. Verse 25 says, Thou knowest, Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive thee and to know thy going out and thy coming in. And to know all that thou doest. David is looking at it like, bro, I just invited him to a feast. I could have took him out or he could have took me out. But it wasn't like that. It wasn't so. You know, but you know, dude being carnal <clears throat> and not giving it a damn <clears throat> about what's going on. He can't see the bigger picture. He can't see spiritually. Okay. <clears throat> Let's read on. It says, you know perfectly. Well, that he came to spy on you and find out everything you're doing. Okay, but Joab murders Abner. But let's see how he murdered him. Come on now. It's some sneaky madness right here. And that's what a lot of these pastors and these niggas are doing, man. In the spirit, they're really doing what Joab is doing in the spirit. Jake really just wants to know what's, what's going on. Peace, ultimately. The way to peace it's through who? The Prince of Peace. But you got a lot of niggas not telling our people who Yahweh Shai is, what he did, his importance, and how he leads us back to the Father. And that the Father was merciful for sending his son to us. Because if it wasn't for Yahweh Shai, hey man, we, we would be through, man. The Lord would still be hiding us and we'd be just as unto Sodom and there unto Gomorrah if it wasn't for that small remnant. So we owe Yahweh Shai a lot. But you got niggas out there that want to exalt their own goddamn self, riding on a freaking high horse and want to be a general or wherever the freak. But the Lord going to cast all you damn demons down. OK, for what you are doing and you're not understanding. OK, you are murderers because you know the truth and you're not telling our people the truth. You're a freaking murderer. Because you know what you're doing, you're premeditating what you're telling the people and what you're not telling them. Damn demons. All right, this is 2 Samuel 3 and uh, 26. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner. Because Abner was on his way back to the land of Benjamin. Pretty much to tell everybody, hey, everything's cool. Hey, David's cool, man. We had a feast. Peace upon Israel. Call me Asha'Allah. That's pretty much what he's, he's going to say. Rise, Israel. We here now. But no, but they, they sent messengers after him before he even made it home, so to speak. To Ishbosheth chef and the rest of the Benjamites, right? It says, Salakia. Come on now. All right. It says, And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Syrah or Syrah. But David knew it not. See, he, so he is by the, you know, the, the river. What was it? The river? No, no, no. He was by the, the well, right? Then um, nearly home. But but he was stopped midway by the messengers like, hold on, uh, come back. He's like, all right. Well, you know, we had a good time. Dave had a good time. All right. I guess the king wants me to come back and do something. I guess we had some unfinished business, whatever. All right. I'll go back. You know, he's 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 thinking it's good. You know, you know, you know, they had wine and some food. So he's feeling nice. All right. Cool. All right. I'll go back. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. They want to see me. All right. Cool. 
This is all good. Yeah, hey, all right. Let's go. So, yeah, so he received those men. Them, but not knowing what the hell was going on. And David didn't know. Like, what the hell? I didn't send for you. You know? This Joab, uh, it says, uh, this Joab's uh, doing, man. Not David. It says, Joab then left David and sent messengers to catch up with Abner, asking him to return. They found him at the well of Syrah and brought him back, though David knew nothing about it. Verse 27, and when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib that he died for the blood of Asahel, his brother, but not even knowing that Asahel died in the battle, not as Joab uh, killed him sneakily, pretending to be a brother, pretending to have peace, but he was the murder in his, in his heart, man. Killed the man in cold blood. Like, what? You know? Like, come on now. It says, when Abner arrived back in Hebron, Joab took him aside at the gateway as if to speak with him privately. But then he stabbed Abner in the stomach and killed him in revenge for killing his brother Asahel. Yeah. Afterward, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord Yahweh by Shemel Shai forever from the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. You see, they said, but because David's mercy, he possessed a throne of an everlasting kingdom. And it could have all went to nothing right here because of what Joab did. Because all the other tribes have been like, well, damn, why would David invite him only to kill him? But it wasn't David's mind to do that. Okay? So you got to remember what Israel's thinking. Like, damn, what the fuck? Like, hold on. What? And then, you know, the Benjamites, when they find out that Ab Abner's dead, but, what, but he went to, uh, but hold on. Like, didn't he go to make peace? What? But he's dead? What? Oh, you know? And it, it would have started a, 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 a second war, man. <laughs> second civil war or whatever, man. And you got, see? See what carnality gets you like, what, what, what's going on? But you got to remember the Lord is behind it all. And, and but guess what? The, uh, uh, Joab got what he, what he deserved, man. But not only him, but his line. We're going to read into it. Let it rest on the head of Joab on all his father's house. And let there not fail from the house of Joab, one that have an issue or that is a leper or that leaneth on a staff or that falleth on the sword, or that lacketh bread. So you see Jake out here through, he like, damn, this dude just always been through ever since I've known him, or this dude is just crippled, or he got cerebral palsy, or, or, or uh, uh, like, why, why is these little young niggas always getting shot out there in Chicago or whatever? You, you might think, like, damn, they might, they might be descendants of Joab. You're like, God damn, like, you got to remember. See, the, hey, that, that was stuck on Joab and his line because of what he did. All right. Come on now. Or, or you, you know, Jake is a bum or a nigga's getting slain in the streets or a dude just uh, uh, got crutches born with, with came and walk or leaneth on the staff or you know, have an issue or have a leprosy. Dude had a vitiligo or or just light skin. But there's a nigga. You go, oh, shit, they might descend from Joab. You know, because we know uh, the tribes now, who the tribes really are. OK, now this is Second Samuel 3 and 29 NLT. Joab and his family are the guilty ones. May the family of Joab be cursed in every generation with a man who has open sores or leprosy or who walks on crutches or dies by the sword or begs for food. Damn. see, you want to be a carnal nigga. Hey, they're not only you that's going to be a judge, but everything that pertains to you. It's a very serious ordeal, man. That's why Yahweh Shai said what he said about the ones that are blessed. You know, niggas just saying, I'm blessed. Them dumb nigga eating swine and pork and just being a demon, not knowing like, no, nah, you ain't blessed. You ain't blessed if you're not trying to make peace. If you're not trying to get the hell up out of here, you're not, uh, uh, you're not blessed. And if you're not calling on the name of Yahweh Bashman Shah, you are not blessed. I don't give a damn what you got. Okay? David mourns Abner. 
And David said to Joab and to all the people that were with him, rend your clothes and gird you with sackcloth and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the bier. Okay. Then David said to Joab and all those that were with him, tear your clothes and put on burlap. Mourn for Abner. And King David himself walked behind the procession to the grave. Verse 32. And they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice because he was the people were, you know, people were thinking different things like what well, Abner was just alive. Like, how's he dead? Like, you got to remember what's going through the people's mind. You see, but David's merciful kindness. You see this? He buried him. All right. I uh, had a, a great procession and all the people is going to know what is in the mind of David through this very act right here. And, um, and then I'm going to close out. I ain't going to make this too long, but let me. Read this here. I mean, let me uh, play this clip. Shalom. You had him, and then you had nowhere to go. I would have figured something out. No. If his friends hadn't found you, you would have frozen to death. You don't care about anyone but yourself. Then again, what should I expect from a spoiled prince? Lieutenant, you'd better learn some respect. Or I will teach it to you. See, that's spirit. Man, he's like, he, he's like uh, you, you just worry about yourself. That was Joab. And then King Saul and, you know, other men that were wicked. And you, when you read this, uh, Samuel, you see men thinking, uh, oh, thinking of their own mind, leaning on their own understanding, and they get destroyed and judged. Right? But David always inquired of the Lord. Men that inquired of the Lord were blessed in the end. Men that didn't uh, 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 inquire of the Lord were destroyed. Excuse me, and cursed. Okay? And he said, uh, he's like, what, what should I expect from a spoiled prince? Now you're knowing, like, you don't know what the hell is going on when it comes to the men of the Lord that's being chastised. David was on the run. David was anointed as a boy. Defeated Goliath in his youth. And then was on the run fought in the wars. He went through a lot before uh, all these things happened. And now when that kingdom is about to be uh, 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 brought to fruition, you got carnal ass niggas and demons uh, uh, trying to mess it up because they're being carnal. And he said, uh, hey, Captain, he's like, uh, uh, you better learn some respect or I will teach it to you. And that's uh, beautiful because David pretty much told that to Joab. He's like, you better learn some respect. Or I will teach it to. And he taught it to him right here. He said, you are going to mourn for Abner. You did it. You going to mourn for him. And Joel is, oh, shit. You know, you're going to you going to hear it uh, right here. Now, this is uh second Samuel three and uh, thirty two. And they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner. And all the people wept. They buried Abner in Hebron. And the king and all the people wept at his graveside. Verse 33, uh, verse 33. And the king lamented over Abner and said, died Abner as a fool dieth in LT. Then the king sang this funeral song for Abner. Should Abner have died as fools die? They, thy hands were not bound, nor thy feet put into fetters. As a man falleth before wicked men. So fellest thou, and all the people wept again over him. Verse 34, your hands were not bound, your feet were not chained. No, you were murdered, the victim of a wicked plot. All the people wept again for Abner. Verse 35, and when all the people came to cause uh, David to eat meat, look how David's going to move. OK, while it was yet day, David swear, saying, which means he made an oath like may, may the Lord do worse to me or kill me if I do this thing. Pretty much. He says, uh, so do Yahweh to me. And more also, if I taste bread or aught else to the sun be down. David had refused to eat anything on the day of the funeral. And now everyone begged him to eat. David had made a vow saying, may Yahweh strike me and even kill me if I eat anything before sundown. Pretty much the next day, 
and all the people took notice of it. This is the point. And all the people took notice of it. Like, whoa. Knowing that it wasn't David's intention. Like, David is really sad for this man. Like, it wasn't his intention. There is peace to be restored to our nation after these wars and after the wars of, you know, that Saul was fighting against the Philistines and David uh, delivering Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and the other enemies. So it, it has been a long time for war and, and, and Israel just wanted peace. Finally, Salakia. All right. And David was the man to bring that peace through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashemashai through the merciful kindness of our God was merciful kindness shown unto uh, uh, many peoples from Saul to to uh, Abner to restoring peace to even Joab because David didn't slay Joab or take him down. But before uh, David went out of this world, he told Solomon, hey, don't let Joab go down to the grave. You get him back for what he did. He killed a righteous man. He murdered him. Don't you let him get away. Pretty much. That's spirit. And we know who, who Solomon is. <laughs> okay. It says, this pleased the people very much. In, in fact, everything the king did pleased them. Verse 37, for all the people and all Israel understood that day that it was not the king, uh, uh, not of the king to slay Abner, the son of Ner. So everyone in Judah and all Israel understood that David was not responsible for Abner's murder. And the king said unto his servants, know you not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel? Then King David said to his to his officials, don't you realize that a great commander has fallen today in Israel? But I like how I said it in the KJV, uh, a prince and a great man. But he's already a commander, a great man, but he was a prince, a prince of the power, man. Got to remember that. And I am this day weak, though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zuriah, be too hard for me. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai shall reward the, the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Man, that's cold. Verse 39, NLT. And even though I am the anointed king, these two sons of Zariah, Joab, and Abishai are too strong for me to control. So may the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai repay these evil men for their evil deeds. Man, that's it. A merciful kindness shown in David, okay? But through his mercy, and those are only a few um, a few uh, excerpts of David's mercy because hey, through the mercy of him ceasing the wars, peace was restored. Peace was, was coming to Israel, okay? But Joab, with his madness, could have destroyed everything at that, at, at that moment, okay? All right, let me see here. Let's get another point. All right. Bear with me, brothers. Oh, yeah, let me read this down here. Ecclesiastes 47 and uh, 3. He played with lions as with kids, talking about David, and with bears as with, as with lambs. So he not a giant? When he was yet but young, and did he not take away reproach from the people when he lifted up his hand with the stone and the sling and beat down the boasting of Goliath? For he called upon the most high Lord, and he gave him strength in his right hand to slay that mighty warrior and set up the horn of his people. So the people honored him with ten thousands and praised him in the blessings of the Lord in that he gave him a crown of glory. For he destroyed the enemies on every side and brought to not the Philistines, his adversaries, and break their horn, their power and stunder unto this day. And all his works, he praised the Holy One most high with words of glory, with his whole heart, his mind. He sung songs and loved him that made him. He set singers also before the altar that by their voices they might make sweet melody and daily sing praises in their songs. He beautified their feasts and set in order the solemn times until the end that they might praise his holy name and that the temple might sound from morning. The Lord took away his sins and exalted his horn, his power forever. He gave him a covenant of kings 
and the throne of glory in Israel. After him, Salakia rose up a wise son, and for his sake, he dwelt at large. See that? That's what the Lord gave to David for the way he moved. All right, and let's get, uh, for they know not what they do, what Yahweh Shai did even greater than that. Being of the line of David, uh, know not what they do, Salakia. No, not what they do. Okay, Salakia. Boom. <clears throat> Luke 23 and 34. Then said Yahweh Shai, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots, because he knew some among uh, the congregation or, or the ones that were surrounding his uh, crucifixion, he knew some of them were believers and didn't know what was really going on. Just as the people uh, uh, at the funeral of Abner, they knew that day that, that David wasn't the cause of Abner's murder. So the people in the crowd knew, like, who's this man that's on the cross? Like, what? I seen the miracles he did. I was there. I heard about the, the 5,000 he fed and the 4,000. I heard about, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the other great miracles, him healing the sick and giving sight to the blind and making the deaf to uh, to hear and making the lame to walk and all of that. So it's the same story, a merciful kindness. But you got to see it, though. But let me uh, play this clip and uh, we're out of here. Shalom. Three years ago today, I was banished. I lost it all. I want it back. I want the avatar. I want my honor, my throne. I want my father not to think I'm worthless. That's beautiful, man. See, he's I want it. He's like three years ago this day. I lost everything. I lost my kingdom. I want the throne. You know, I want the avatar. He said, I want my father to not think that I'm a, a you know, a mistake, a failure. All right. And that's that's what we want in the eyes of the Lord. And it begins with our belief in Yahweh. Why Yahweh shy and to show merciful kindness as he did for us. OK, and when we were yet sinners, he died for us. So how much more showing our love to the brethren and moving as David moved <clears throat> and other great men, our forefathers moved. OK. Doing that, which is right. Let me get. Like one more script and we out of here. I was willing you were edified. Didn't think it was going to go this long, but you already know how it is. It just, the time gets away from you. Um, Ecclesiasticus 51. Boom. All right. Let's start right at verse 20. I directed my soul unto her wisdom and I found her in pureness. I've had my heart joined, mine joined with her from the beginning. Therefore, shall I not be forsaken? My heart was troubled in seeking her. Therefore, have I got in a good position? The Lord, Yahweh, by Shemel Shai, have given me a tongue for my reward. And I will praise him therewith. Draw near unto me, ye unlearned, and dwell in the house of learning. Wherefore are ye slow? And what say ye to these things? Seeing your souls are very thirsty. We're hungering and thirsting for righteousness. But blessed are you that that hunger and thirst for that. I opened my mouth and said, buy her for yourselves. That's showing mercy without money. Spreading this word, this gospel, the good news. Put your neck under the yoke. And hey, suffer the persecution while doing the labor, the work. Put your neck under the yoke and let your soul receive instruction. She is hard at hand to find. Behold with your eyes how that I have but little labor and have gotten unto me much rest because your, your pure mind, you're going to see the Lord and you're going to have peace. All right. And you show him mercy. Mercy is going to be shown unto you. It says, get learning with a great sum of money and get much gold by her. Let your soul rejoice in his mercy and be not ashamed of his praise. Work your work be times. And in his time, he will give you your reward. And with that, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash, by whom we do function, double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elect, the house of David, 
To your brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith, shalom, keep it up. To your sisters doing that which is becoming of women, shalom. And to those that are addicted unto this ministry, I say, shalom. Those willing you have been edified until the next time, I say, shalom. On to the next one. Shalom.